Hey everybody, it's Virginia. Um, it is early. Um, I've got about an hour. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit short. Um, Lord has really, really put it on my heart to get up this morning and, uh, and just start painting. And so, um, and to bring a word, um, um, I've been studying in the book of Revelation. I've also been uh, studying um, in the book of uh, Corinthians. Um, I've been studying about who, I, I, there's that love chapter in Corinthians. And and um, a lot of that is to me the characteristics of who God is, describing who God is. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I encourage you to go there and read that and read it with a different take, um, describing who God is. Um, and then I was reading in the warnings to the different churches in, in, in the book of Revelation. And, and um, there's a lot of warning. There's a lot of warning to churches who are even doing good. He said, but, you know, there's things I have against you. You've tolerated false spirit, false prophets. You have tolerated um, people in your churches that are worshiping false gods, that are living in sexual sin. You have tolerated. Um, there's other churches that he has given warning to that, you know, you, you, you're doing all this stuff, but you have, you're doing and doing and doing, but you have come away from your first love you don't know you don't have that intimacy with Jesus anymore so get right uh, there's um, messages um, basically in Re from Revelation chapter 2 uh, through chapter 3 um, he's talking about you know churches that are f really faithful but I still have this against you or um, I mean, he's talking to, to churches who have, who are not doing anything, but are just existing. They're just like, they're, they're not, they're like asleep. He says, you're asleep. Um, and yet there's a few in your church that aren't asleep. I'm going to tell you, if you could read Revelation, uh, the, the Revelation given to John on the island of Patmos. And Jesus gave him visions and spoke to him on this island that he was sequestered to. He was um, put away on an island by himself. The island of Patmos is a punishment of being a, a great teacher of the teachings of Jesus. And, and John was amazing. I, I can't even you know imagine. I don't think you have enough written about John that you can read his writings. Um, and he's talking, uh, so he's giving all these warnings. He is giving these amazing warnings. Churches who are asleep, churches who have fallen into sin, churches who are just inviting false prophets to come in and letting the ears be tickled. And, and um, <clears throat> so he, then he talks about, and this was the message that he had <laughs> on my heart. And I'm, I'm praying that I can do some painting because I even have a canvas set up and just, you know, following what's on my heart. Um, he says um, in Revelation 3, verse 14, uh, verse 14, to the angel messenger of the assembly church in Laodicea. Now, I'm reading from the Amplified, the classic Amplified. And these are, this is what my Bible looks like. This is, a, an, when I, you know, when I first got an amplified Bible, it was like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, it, the, the words were flying off the pages. And, and they, maybe they don't to that level that they did, <clears throat> but they still, amplified will expound on the, into the original Aramaic, Greek, and Hebrew meaning of the scriptures. If you don't have one, get one. Get a classic one, not a not a ladder model. Um, so to the church in Laodicea, write these words. 
write these words of the trusty, faithful, true witness, the origin, the beginning, and the author of God's creation. This is Jesus. Write these words of Jesus. I know your record of works and what you are doing, that you are neither hot, you are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. So go back. That was verse 15 and 16. I know the record of your works. So this is a church that has so many works and is doing so many things. He knows the record of what they've done. They are doing, they are doing, they have programs, they are feeding the poor, they are doing the works. They're probably building places. I, I don't know. They're, they're just doing all kinds of works. He says, I know what you are doing. But you are neither cold or hot. He says, I want you to be one or the other. So because you are called lukewarm not hot or not cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. There's other translations that says, I will vomit you, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I've grown wealthy, and I am not in need of anything. And you do not realize and understand that, I'm going to paraphrase, that in my eyes, Jesus said, you are wretched, you are poor, you are pitiable, you are blind, and you are naked. Therefore, I counsel you to purchase from me fine gold, refined and tested by fire, and you may be truly wealthy and have white clothes to clothe yourself and to keep the shame of your nudity from being seen. And you will have salve to put on your eyes so that you may see. Those who, I'm, who I dearly love and tenderly love, I tell their faults and convict and convince and reprove and I chasten them. I discipline and I instruct them. So be enthusiastic and in earnest and burning with zeal, repent. Change your mind and your attitude. For behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and listens and heeds my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and I will eat with him and he will eat with me. He who overcomes is victorious. I will grant him to sit beside me on my throne. I, as I myself overcame and I was victorious and I sat down next to my father on his throne he who is able to hear, let him hear and heed what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. So I didn't go through all his warnings to the seven churches. But this is what he wanted me to speak on. The church that's grown lukewarm, doing a lot of work, but without that intimacy. Jesus said in Matthew, there's many of you on that day that will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And didn't we cast out devils in your name? And so here was a church. These were people doing works, operating in supernatural gifts that were actually doing some deal, right? They were, they were, they were operating in the Holy Spirit. They were, or the gifts of the Spirit. They were prophesying in Jesus' name. Yet they were so deceived, they have grown so cold in their hearts without intimacy with Jesus. You know, Jesus said, you got to have faith like a child. And, 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 and it came to me a couple of days ago, some of us are just too adult for God. We just are too adult for God. <laughs> so here's a warning about being lukewarm, showing up, checking it off your list, doing works, doing this, doing a busy about, busy, busy, busy. You know, I, I share with friends my own experience about doing, about busyness, about God doing good stuff that I've learned the hard way. 
I can get, I can say yes to a lot of church stuff. I can say yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do this. And it's like, yeah, you know, maybe deep down inside, I think I'm going to get brownie points from God. I don't know. But I've learned the hard way that I, I got, I would get so caught up with doing that I lost sight of my intimacy with Jesus because I felt satisfied by doing. So it was like a counterfeit. It was filling, but it wasn't the, 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 the intimacy with Jesus that he has called us to have that love for our first love. He gives a, a good example of that in uh, the teachings about when Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, Martha was a doer. She was a type A personality. She would get her house in order. Jesus was coming to dinner and she is working. She's slaving away while her sister Mary is sitting in the living room with Jesus and she's at Jesus' feet and she's just listening to everything Jesus has for her. And Martha comes storming into the living room saying, Jesus, don't you care? I'm doing all this work getting together. All these people are here. I've got all this work to do. And can you just tell my my lazy sister to help me? I, don't you see all this work I have to do for you? And he says, Martha, Martha, you are exceedingly worried about many things. But Mary is choosing the right thing that can never be taken from her. The intimacy with Jesus, can, these are treasures that can never be taken. While Mary, like Mar, uh, while Martha is doing all the works, but has no treasure. Martha ended well, though. So we can end well. So in my own experience, I had said yes to many things and, and um, got so far away from that intimacy with Jesus because I was so distracted. I was filling up with things that truly didn't satisfy, but they were good things. So what I've learned and what I share with people is when there's programs to get involved with, there's things to do in your church, please go to God first. Because while those are good things, but go to God that and ask. God, is this what you would have for me? What is the direction you have for me? Because if you're filling up, folks, I'm going to tell you, if you're filling up with a lot of doing, even though they're good things, if you're filling up with that, you won't, you'll get distracted. And God has a very unique and special assignment for each one of us. For whatever season we're in, there's always an assignment. He has a target. He has a, he's got a plan. He's got, I mean, and if we're filled up, with other things, we won't, we're just going to check it off our list. Gee, I showed up and that was good and feel good. And I did this and I did that and I did, did, did. And, I, and he says, but that's not what I told you to do. So we're in a season, kids. It's getting late. I'm going to tell you, I'm not a doomsdayer because, because we, the church ends the the, 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 tr the true followers of Jesus are going to end well, it, but we're we're in some seasons now, and and our world has gotten so dark. I mean, we live in a day of tolerating uh, late uh, abortion at any stage, uh, uh, transgender children, pe people fighting for their rights to give the babies horm their little babies, their little children hormones. Um, we have, we have just turned a blind eye to, um, what the Bible calls sin is homosexuality. God loves everybody. He wants us to love everybody, but not tolerate. Um, but because, but what, what happened is the church has grown lukewarm and there, and then there's that, uh, years ago, I saw like this muzzle on the bride of Christ where she couldn't speak the truth because of political correctness. That, that's that's a major trap for us because we're called haters, we're called xenophobics, we're called homophobics, we're called all those names, and we don't like to be called names. We want everybody to love us. Well, not everybody loves us. Not everybody loves Jesus. But we've grown cold. Many of us have grown so have so much apathy and and just like lukewarm and indifference and. 
and and there's tragedies all around us, a massive amount, the atrocities and the pandemics of homelessness, the pandemics of suicide, the pandemics of of gender uh, identity, the trend, the the the, the, the pandemic of of abortions, the pandemics of prostitution and sex slaves, the pandemics and and we'll do a little work. But we get satisfied with doing the little work or the getting caught up in programs and we've lost the power of our first love. We've lost the the, the power to go into a community and 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 give up our needs and our ourselves for others in in the way that Jesus is talking about um following him following his direction i mean he's going to take you in journeys that you would never go because it's not comfortable so i'm going to paint that was my word also i know what else he told me to do so um i had recorded this earlier but he wants me to expound he wanted me to expound upon the lukewarm church and I'm going to tell you, it's not a word of like critical uh, criticism. It's a word of, you know, there's a judgment coming. There's a judgment coming. So s recalibrate, recheck yourself. Have the Holy Spirit come and search your heart. Because if you search your heart, you're going to come up incredibly good or incredibly bad. And it's not going to be of the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Daily ask him. Um... The hour's late. January 1st, 2020, the Lord gave me a word. A word. Every year I try to spend a couple days with him, sequestered um, at the end of the previous year. So it was like December, probably December 29th um, and on. I started praying and fasting and no visitations and no Facebook. And I was like just hearing the Lord and... And I asked for a word from the Lord, maybe, you know, for direction. I'm not actually sure, you know, even, you know, but there's like a new year coming. And Lord, what do you want to say? What, what, what is it? What about this year? So I'm supposed to share this in this teaching. January 1st, 2020, there's a dismantling coming. I hear the Lord saying there is a dismantling coming and it taking place even now. It's in its beginning stages. This dismantling will take apart those ideologies that have stood in my way of the fullness that I have for you. Ideologies that made it okay to just show up. Ah, but I demand more of you who call me father. I have much more for you. So there must be a dismantling. There will be times of great intensity this year because taking bricks out of walls that have been there for so long require much effort. Not on my part, but on your part, says the Lord. I cannot allow you to lean on your own understanding any longer. I have planned for you to fulfill a very specific, a very unique assignment. So when it becomes really uncomfortable and really intense this year, know that it's me. And I hear the Lord say there's a great rumbling of the earth that will take place most of the year. This rumbling and this groaning will awaken the sleeping giant in my church. For all creation waits in eager expectation for my children to be revealed. So taking bricks out of walls that have been there for so long require much effort, not on my part, says the Lord, but on your part. That's a surrendering. That's a, that, the effort is the, 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 tra the traps of the performance traps, the, the, the programs, the, the doing, the doing, the doing. And, 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 and we've checked that off our list. It's okay, you know, because we've been showing up. And he says, ah, it's not okay to show up. These are ideologies that you have placed in your, in your theology so strong. They're like brick walls. And it's going to require much effort on your part to let go of your way of doing things. 
so because and you can't be your way and you're leaning on your own understanding i can't allow you to do it anymore he says he says because i've planned for you to fulfill a very specific and unique assignment he says so when you're so when you're when you're doing and you're doing and you're doing and you're caught up in a corporation of church a business of church you're caught up in in making that structure work and you have all the parts in order, he says, you're missing what I have for you. So these are walls that have to be taken down. These are bricks that have to come out. This, these ideologies of what you have made church, of what you have made out of your faith, there must be a dismantling. And he says, when it becomes really intense this year, and it's going to be more intense, I'm going to tell you, it, he, it's going to become more intense. This is April, this is April 13th, 2020, kids. I mean, and I know there's, you know, like promising news coming out of the government, and yet this is, the, I, I think it's going to get a lot more intense this year. So I want you to be prepared for that. Don't be caught off guard. Don't be caught off guard. There's a shaking and a great rumbling of the earth that's going to take place all this year. But what it will do, it's going to take us out of the mindset of just showing up and checking it off our list and being so involved with doing things. It's going to shake all that. It's shaking it now. And yet there's churches that are still tr really trying hard to incorporate, incorporate and press through with programs and and just like, you know, just the same old, same old, but they're doing it on, on the internet now. You know, they've got the, 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 the worship set that is five, uh, four songs, three songs, or fast songs, or slow songs, there's messages, there's the announcements. This is called the, the, the church that's not hearing. This is the church that has grown cold, the lukewarm church, but they're filled with programs. This is universal. I'm telling you. And so you may not like me, it's okay, but I'm going to bring this word to you because what does he want you to do? He wants you to repent from your works. He wants you to come back to your first love. He wants you to be on fire for Jesus. How can you do that? By having God search your heart. Holy Spirit, ask Holy Spirit to come in. Start spending time with him. It's really uncomfortable because you're used to just showing up and checking it off your list. He's wanting to wake the church up. There's a harvest. There's people that don't know Jesus. There's people that need to be rescued from darkness. And we are comfortable. We're lukewarm and we're comfortable. We, ch we just show up and we check it off our list. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm going to church. I'm singing the songs. I get a goosebump and I go home. I forget what the pastor even said. By Monday. But I check it off my list. I went to church. So I love you. I have to search my own heart. I have gotten in that trap. I don't want to be in that trap anymore. I want to shake it off because it's a trap. It's a it's a mentality that kind of glazes, makes us glaze over from reality of Jesus and what he's called you to and called me to. So during this time that it's become really intense, it's going to get more intense. This is April. It's going to get more intense. Seek Jesus, the government doesn't have your answer. Your programmed corporate business-like church does not have your answer. Actually will lead you astray. Seek him in, in your own place. This is one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one. Do it daily, daily, hourly, daily. Many of us are going to start fasting, food, internet, TV, all the stuff that we're filling up with during the pandemic. Come on. That's not... Do you think that when those plagues that would happen in Israel, the plagues that were sent by God uh, to, 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 to shake nations and to shake leaders um, at different times, to do you think those people were just playing Yahtzee to pass the time hiding in their home and they had 
you know, the Passover lamb. They had, you know, when they, Jesus, God sent a death plague into Israel as a sign to Pharaoh to let his people go. And all the firstborn children were being killed and all the firstborn animals were being killed. There was a spirit of death that was going through that God sent. God sent it. So, so the pharisaical uh, Pharaoh, that, that spirit, would, le would let his people go. So that lukewarm can also be brought on by a religious spirit. That religious spirit says we have let go of our first love and just keep doing the d deal. Keep doing the deal. Put your nice clothes on and go to church. It's time now to actually, what is the church? We are the church. Go back, read the book of Acts. Because there's hope. He is not giving up on us. He is not. Those of us who call Jesus our Lord and Savior, he is not about to give us a, give up on us. He's got a plan and a purpose, and he is coming back for what a, a bride without wrinkle or spot. He's coming back for a bride that's clothed in white. Can you say that you're clothed in white today? That you are that unblemished bride? I can't. But I'm seeking. I am seeking, seeking, seeking with all my heart. And it's not going to be popular, kids. This is not, I'm going to tell you, it's not popular. Well, you're going you're gonna, to you're, you're gonna be that oddity. You're going to be what a lot of churchgoers will say, well, that's a little bit extreme for me. That's just extreme. Well, I'm going to tell you, everything that I read... Everything that I read in my Bible is pr is very extreme. The teachings of Jesus are very severe. We're peculiar people, right? Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord. He says, on that day, not everybody who calls me Lord is coming into the kingdom of heaven. Get right with God. Get back to the secret place. Get back to being a child with Jesus daily. He's going to ask you to give up a whole bunch of stuff too. He's got to. You can't have a foot in the world and a foot in the, in, in the kingdom of God and call yourself. You can't. You can't. You cannot. He requires you to be wholly his. Fully his. Er, oh, everything. You can't. It, it says, you know, a rich man is going to be hard for a rich man. It'd be easier for a rich man to go through an eye of a ne needle than it would be to enter heaven. Um, it, 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 adulterers and slanderers and drunkards and all this stuff where they won't see the kingdom of heaven. Gossipers, they won't see the kingdom of heaven. Um, so I'm telling you, the teachings of Jesus are severe. I gave you the word of the Lord that he gave me January 1st. This is great shaking, a great rumbling. He's got to wake us up. Help, help us, God, to wake up. Ask him to wake you up. All right, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint some daisies. That's on my heart today. Paint daisies. All right. I love you. This is, there's hope. This is a, not a message of condemnation. This is a message of there's time to turn around.